The year is 1984, I was seven, Hats Like This Were Cool, and Beverly Hills Cop was the top grossing movie of the summer. Oh, and this came out. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm calling it a resto mod uh, because I've got my hands on a RC10 from 1984. This is the A stamp gold pan. Uh, I'm using words I don't really even know what they mean because, <laughs> uh, when, like I said, when this car came out, I was seven years old. So uh, I wasn't even really probably thinking about RC, but I definitely remember seeing videos and promotional stuff at the hobby shop when I started to go uh, all around the associated buggies. And uh, this is the beginning of, I guess, the modern era in buggy racing. There is a lot of really innovative stuff going on in this chassis. And one of the reasons I wanted to have one of these was for the nostalgia of what RC used to be. And um, I'm really happy to have this in my collection. Uh, my local hobby shop called them up. I said, what have you got in the basement that uh, might give me a challenging project uh, that is vintage and retro? And uh, this is what they provided, uh, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, this comes from an age when uh, cigarette and alcohol advertising on stickers for RC cars was common and allowed. Uh, the team associated RC10 uh, was a very uh, decorated car in its day and won a ton of uh, national and world level awards. So uh, very cool to have one on the bench. This one is pretty much complete. And uh, I did mention earlier on that it is an A stamp chassis. I think that offers some more rarity or originality to it. Uh, if you have any ideas about what the A stamp means, by all means, post your comments down below. I'd love to read through that feedback and actually get a better idea of what it means. So by all means, post down below uh, because this is all new to me, even though it is almost 40 years old. Uh, the chassis itself is mostly complete. I'm gonna take off the body here. The body is an aftermarket body. It's not the original RC10 body. There's a, a bit of a difference to the structure and the way it actually is put together, where the windows go and everything. Uh, this was painted with brush paint. Uh, I'm presuming some sort of polycarbonate paint. Uh, it's definitely not sprayed on there. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if this was in the hobby shop's uh, personal collection or if this was something that, that was purchased uh, with the idea of restoring. Uh, I'll definitely be doing a full restoration on this. And uh, someone pointed out in uh, one of the live streams that I did recently that Ampro uh, Engineering, who is a fellow YouTuber, uh, as, and I'll make sure to put a link to his channel down below, he does a lot of restorations. He's also a vendor on the Scale Builders Guild. And one of the things he does is take all of this old school technology and put new school tech inside of the cases. So it still has that old school vibe, but with all new electronics on the inside. And that's something I'm gonna tackle with this uh, because these electronics are very old, <laughs> very old. Um, yeah, <laughs> let me see if I can go through some of these things here and explain what you're seeing. Of course, there is a large uh, uh, stick pack here. This is a 7.2 volt uh, NICAD battery. Uh, it doesn't say that it's anything else on there, so I have to guess that it's NICAD. Uh, I bet it won't hold a charge. <laughs> It'd be pretty cool to see if it did, but I don't feel like plugging it in and burning the house down, so we'll probably just trash that and get rid of it all together. Uh, the other major thing you're gonna notice here is something that is probably going to be foreign to most people. This is a mechanical speed controller. Uh, there were no ESCs in this time. And how this works, um, it's uh, controlled by a servo and uh, the electricity flows from the battery directly into this. And there is this massive heat sink, ceramic heat sink on the front here. Uh, and what happens is the power goes through this, the servo uh, turns this uh, wheel that has this little tiny contact on the bottom of it, and then there are all these metal contacts on this uh, kind of uh, circuit board below that. And as the uh, servo moves through its range of motion, 
it either goes into uh, current forward or neutral or current reverse. And that's how that's controlled. Through your radio to a servo to this rotating disc to basically send power directly to the motor. That was a speed control. It's pretty crazy. Uh, this heatsink would get so massively hot that if you touched it, you would burn your hand. And these things smelled crazy like electronics. Uh, a lot of ozone burning. Uh, it's definitely going to be relegated to the history books. I don't think we're going to try to make this mechanical speed control work anymore. Yeah, it's a, a cool history lesson for sure. Um, not very efficient <laughs> by today's standards. Uh, the radios of the time were not very good either. Uh, I believe that this uh, worked on an AM channel. Uh, we have the actual original radio here. Uh, it is a Futaba, so uh, I know Josh will be pretty pleased with this. 72.2 uh, megahertz, so maybe that is on the FM. No, it is AM. Yeah, it says AM right there. Uh, I don't even know what this needle does. There's like, this needle uh, adjustment. I literally have no clue how that works, uh, but let's just say it works. Uh, stick, uh, which was, you know, proportional um, throttle and steering, and that's it, two channels, nothing else. Uh, there was dual rate, it looks like anyway, uh, and you could mix some of the channels as well. All analog, of course, there's not a lot. Uh, I like that it's called the U-Disco. <laughs> like, uh, you know, everybody disco dance now, I guess. That is a big receiver. Uh, anyway, moving on. Um, there would have had to have been a battery pack for the receiver, uh, which is back here. Uh, some double A's, which have long since expired. Some very questionable wiring. Uh, and then there was a steering servo as well. Interesting note on the RC10 steering servos, they weren't actually mechanically mated to the chassis in any way. Uh, a lot of people stuck them on with servo tape. Uh, this one's been modified slightly to use some wire that's wrapped in what looks like hair. <laughs> and that's been uh, sort of more firmly mounted to the chassis in that way. It actually goes through the bottom of the chassis. I hope those holes were uh, not drilled, but it looks like they were. So this gold pan's definitely seen some, some use. And yeah, it's a simple steering rack. Uh, not the best in the whole world. There was a big servo saver on here. So uh, clearly that was designed to keep that servo lasting as long as possible. Uh, the motor that was included is a very, uh, for the time, I'm sure, a very hot motor. Uh, this was a 480 WT Spa Option House Kyosho motor. Uh, here it is here. And do you see the price tag on that? Those are $1984. So this was a really expensive motor. Competition motor. And there's some really interesting uh, documentation on this box. For eight minute races. Tons of spelling errors. Uh, but... Uh, this is vintage cool, if I've ever seen it. Uh, I'm pretty, like, that's, that's really great. It's awesome. Uh, there was also a uh, battery charger included. Uh, <laughs> this is the battery charger, uh, which had two settings, high or low. <laughs> it's all in Japanese. Uh, I presume that button there starts your charging. I don't know. It was specifically for a 1200 ma NICAD battery. So charging's come a long way since the 80s. Car technology's come a long way, but you can definitely see the pedigree in most modern vehicles with uh, the RC10. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the chassis itself. Uh, this was a six gear transmission. So uh, before the age of the three gear stealth transmission, which I think probably came uh, many iterations later in the RC10 lineup. Good news is, and rolling around on the bench, there isn't any resistance. It feels like the gears are really, really clean and smooth. Um, we're still gonna obviously tear down that transmission entirely. Uh, it's good to know that there's not anything in there crunching around. Uh, 1.7 inch wheels on the rear, um, not sure on the front. Um, 
totally adjustable camber and uh, looks like um, all these plastic pieces are in reasonable condition. The original associated white plastic um, hasn't taken very well to the years of uh, neglect. It's definitely yellowed a lot and it's really filthy. But I've learned of two ways that I can help restore this plastic. Uh, one is sonically cleaning them and uh, I just so happen to have a sonic jewelry cleaner that my wife doesn't know I've stolen from her. So I'm going to use that to clean these white parts. I've also heard that if you use some uh, hydrogen peroxide and leave the parts in the sun they will get whiter again. So something leads me to believe that UV light is actually good for these white parts. So we're going to test that theory as well. Uh, all of the aluminum is still in place. Uh, there are a lot of screws missing, uh, so we'll be definitely getting a new hardware kit to keep this thing together. Uh, my goal is to try to keep as many of the original plastic pieces as possible. Some of them aren't in great shape. Uh, these are the original jelly bean style wheels. Uh, they've definitely seen better days. Uh, same with the tires. They are really, really old as well. Uh, all the bearings will have to be replaced, but Technically and structurally, the car is complete. Uh, we're going to do a massive teardown here in this episode, or at least get started on it, and start to clean some parts. And cleaning uh, will definitely reveal if there's any issues on the car itself or structural issues. And uh, we're going to try to keep as many of the original parts as possible. Some may have to be replaced. Uh, some things I'm definitely going to be purchasing, and I've already had a lot of interest from uh, viewers who are more than willing to send me some parts. Uh, I'm uh, paying for some here and there and I'm looking for original bits and pieces. Uh, and we're gonna try to get this car back to its original factory state and take it out and run it. That's the goal. I don't wanna put this on a shelf. I wanna drive it. I wanna have some fun with it. Vintage buggies are so cool. And uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with running something like this. I think it's just uh, kinda necessary to pay a good homage to the history of our hobby and to also enjoy some vintage fun. What do you think? Do you think that this is a reasonable car to start with? Do you think it looks like it's all here? Uh, post your comments down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. Uh, if you're enjoying this video, of course, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. We'll definitely be doing a lot more with this car. Um, I am more than open to your tips and tricks if you've got any setup ideas or if you've got any parts. By all means, post down below. I am going to be reading through this a lot and I'd really like to get your feedback and see what's possible with a car of this age. There will be a lot more to come on this RC10 Resto Mod. I am really looking forward to tearing it down and really getting at all of the parts and seeing what is there, what needs to be replaced or fixed and uh, let's make this thing look as new as possible. I think that's gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.